time for a drivephysics.com presentation and such. So I guess we'll just play a video of an experiment. Can't even call it that really. It's so fundamental, so rudimentary, so I shouldn't even have to show you this. So it's a pendulum video, <laughs> okay? So I made a pendulum and it, uh, let's just play a little bit. All right, so I gave it an oscillation. Let's stop it at the right, there's the right point to stop it. All right, so you can see here there are four steel balls hanging from four magnets. All right, so and this one has one magnet, even though it looks like two, there's only one there. One magnet, one steel ball. These are four times closer to the fulcrum. That is, this distance is this distance four times. It balances perfectly. Now, the great thing about this, I actually like it as a piece of art. You can, you know, it's so easy to slide them into the right position to balance anything. It really works kind of nice with the magnets. Anyway, beside the point. Um, but yes, it illustrates simply. Okay, now the math is kind of simple. I've been drawing it over and over again. I'll draw it one more time. We'll play the video. I'll draw it one more time. I'll explain what the two theories say. Now, momentum explains it all quite logically. It all fits. It works perfectly. MV as an understanding of what's on the two sides of the lever, what's being communicated through the lever, the steel bar and how the two objects are essentially interacting with each other in space. So you could understand them as individual objects. It's this individual object and this individual object and understand the lever has nothing to do with it. The steel bar has nothing to do with it. And we're just comparing these two objects. And these two objects have to be the same thing. They can't equal different things. There can't be more energy on one side than there is on the other side one side is producing the other side. Whatever the other side does, that action is a reaction to what the other side does. You can't have half as much energy on one side and twice as much energy on the other side, or in this case, four times as much energy. So understand, they think this one ball, because it's moving faster, has four times more energy than these four balls moving slower. And it doesn't make any logical sense. It's just silly, frankly. It's silly to think so. So there's the action. So the action is this ball moves four times the distance that these four are moving. So these four are moving one quarter of the amount of total up and down distance that this one moves four times the distance. And that's the only difference between the two. And because they have a one-half mb squared theory of energy, they're saying this one has four times as much energy. Four times as many watts. Four times as many joules. That I could, I could run a motor four times longer using the energy of this one ball than the energy of these four collectively understanding that all we really have to say is, is these are just atoms and the atoms are in motion and we have four times the number of atoms here moving four times slower it's the same thing so you can see the rather dramatic difference now so theoretically if I put the energy in on this side right if I if I started initiating the motion with these four balls, moving them, okay, then theoretically I'm creating free energy out here. So I put a hundred joules of energy here. I drop these four onto the stick, so to speak, a certain distance. The, the, the gravity will create a reaction which will be to overgo okay the distance and so this one will react by going up and then this one's too high and it'll be pushed down by gravity and eventually it'll go to equilibrium so as i put the energy in i'm breaking the equilibrium i break it by a certain amount a certain amount of joules of energy of broken equilibrium and i've initiated a process where they say 
this has half the, you know, one quarter of the energy that this motion up will have. And that somehow this four times the energy going up over here will only create four, one quarter of the energy going down on the other side. I mean, it's completely, it's silly. So in each motion here, they're saying four times the energy. So if I put a generator on this ball and, and try to steal all its energy, I'll get four times the amount of energy I'll get from these four balls moving less distance. That's their theory. It can't possibly be correct. So it oscillates and does what you logically understand. It's slowly but surely the extra energy is getting absorbed by the little bits of friction, the tension. It's all being leaked into the ground eventually, and eventually the extra energy will dissipate out of the system. But for a while, the energy is going to be caught going back and forth and back and forth. Obviously, it can't be four times the energy over here. 400 joules of energy over here, and then only 100 over here, and then 400 over here, and then 100 over here. That can't be a rational explanation of reality. I, I mean, you know, I, I shouldn't have to show you this, right? I mean, this is so simple, so logical, it's completely obvious what's taking place. This shouldn't be under dispute. Your theory says these four balls together only have one quarter the energy that this one steel ball has. That's your theory. That's what physics says. It's clearly stupid. It clearly can't happen. Do you think when this goes down and it pushes these up against gravity. This is going down with 400 joules of energy. This will go up with only 100 joules of energy. Then when these four balls are up here and they're going to fall down and they're going to lift this object, they only fall with 100 joules of energy. But somehow this object is lifted up with 400 joules of energy. Don't you understand? That's free energy. I just put, I put 100 in on this side, I get 400 out on that side. You can't see that's free energy? That that can't possibly be true or we would take advantage of it? We'd have free energy machines if free energy machine was this simple? Okay, so that was it. <laughs> so obvious, can't miss it. Uh, why do I have to argue it? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I'm going to just freeze it at some opportune point right there. So they perfectly balance it. So eventually it just stays just like that straight line. Four equals one. The weight of this, because of the leverage because of the way you've taken the the force of gravity and extended it over this stick that is you know creating a mechanism tying this object to this object um, that it weighs now the same as these four objects that's its weight its capacity to apply pressure but that's only in this circumstance in the sense that I could Again, I could put the four objects here and it would balance exactly the same way. So the weight as a, an ability to apply pressure only has to do with this cheating mechanism that allows you to balance these two objects by extending distance and creating greater motion. So you have to sort of understand that what gravity is really doing is it's constant. This is still moving up and down in a sense. And this is still moving up and down. This is still moving four times as much as this object here. And that's why it's balancing. Because this is one moving four times as fast. This is four moving four times slower. 
and those two circumstances add up to the same thing. So it's just like having pieces of something and all you're doing is changing their size versus their speed and you're just saying well if it's bigger then it's twice as much uh, for example twice as much energy um, twice as much capacity to do something and the velocity is the other component so it's just your your horizontal line here is saying how big is it and your vertical line is saying how fast is it going um, that's your x and your y axis um, and there's just no need to square anything all right so yeah that's all I mean uh, I can just draw it and make this, this the, the simple little points and just say shouldn't we be done with this this is just so obviously wrong physics to sit there and say there's twice as much energy four times as much energy in that lighter object than there is in those four objects collectively all right so I click this and I can get rid of this yeah that worked and yeah, software isn't working it's not highlighting things at all correctly but anyway it's good enough the task has been accomplished so again the lever fulcrum one distance two distances so I did four just to you know illustrate that it's four times as much I could do eight I could do 16 I can move it to any positions and create any ratio of you know it can be one to one it can be one to two it can be one to 2.4 it can be any number um, all right and so you're just basically saying that look you know I have a two mass here I have a one mass here it's the same thing mv works mv doesn't matter i make the the v big i can make the m small i can make the m big okay mv so that's a julia sumner sort of way of looking at it just change the way they're the relationship but it's always the same amount of ink <laughs> you know it's always the same amount of uh, proportional so you just keep it proportional and it, that's momentum and it works and explains everything that took place but it doesn't work when you sit there and realize that I can drop something. I can lift the two with 100 joules of energy and drop it. And then somehow when this goes up, because it's going to go more distance because of the lever, this is going to drop, okay, as it should. And this is going to go four I mean, twice as fast. And it's just a fact of what the lever is going to actually produce and by their one half mv squared okay formula that means this side has twice as much energy so I put a hundred joules of energy in and I'll get 200 joules of energy out in terms of this motion will be 200 joules this was 100 joules in this will be 200 joules out that's what it's going to produce as an effect that's going to be the actual consequence and we know that doesn't happen we know we don't get this we know we can't use it we know we can never pull it out of any system we know it's not real thermodynamic real heat it's not real energy it's not a real substance it's not a real event it doesn't happen this is a fable okay an unnecessary pile of rubbish Descartes Newton and Galileo understood energy to be this doesn't need to be any more complicated they got right answers there was no big giant wrong answer there wasn't some like obvious thing that Newton got wrong there wasn't some obvious thing that Galileo got wrong There wasn't some obvious thing that Descartes got wrong some big giant elephant of error that needed to be fixed that we needed to have an MV squared and let's understand this the first competing idea the first attack against MV was mv squared which we now know to be way off the numbers were even worse so the the half object now had four times the energy by mv squared and the you know the the example i showed would be eight times the energy we know that isn't true we know the one ball doesn't have eight times the energy of the four it's crazy and then they put a one half in it in the 1800s I mean, come on. This is just obviously a mistake. It was obviously a mistake 300 years ago because the lever proved it silly. 
It was a mistake 200 years ago. It was a mistake 150 years ago. It was a mistake 100 years ago. It serves no useful function. There's every piece of evidence that, you know, there was no MV squared was not in the computer. Okay, one half MV squared was not in the computer that landed the lunar module on the moon. It didn't use this. It, it knew momentum is all that mattered. It knew that it was going to shoot out an exhaust that contained particles, and the particles had a velocity, and all that mattered was how much mass and how much velocity did they shoot out of the spaceship. And that was what navigated. That's what turned it, and that's what pushed it, that's what moved it. That was everything. MV. That's what landed on the moon. All right, And the fact that NASA doesn't overtly tell you that but you can find it, the facts, you know, if you go deep enough, you'll find out there was a very small, you know, it was, computers were pretty lame back then, and they could only fit, you know, 400 or 300 or whatever, a certain number of formulas could be in the computer, and that's it. And so it only had a certain amount of these functions it could use. And so the space was incredibly valuable. It couldn't afford to waste anything. It couldn't afford to do things wrong. It had to get the right answers. It had to get them as short and as, as brief as possible. And this is what they used. So come on. Just, there's no use for this. It doesn't make any sense to sit there and say objects have this preposterous amount of extra energy because they move fast that lighter, fast things have more energy, that ton-ton trains going five miles an hour have less energy than, than five-ton trains going 10 miles an hour. When this is the, the five-ton train here, this is the 10-ton train here. And clearly, this 10-ton train going five miles an hour creates the five-ton train going 10 miles an hour. It clearly creates it. How could they have different amounts of energy when one creates the other? And this creates the motion of the 10-ton train. How could it be possible they could have different energies? I, I can only, you know, I can only reason, you know, there's nothing, I have no other tools. To, to, you can only deal with the facts that exist. And it's unfortunate that they don't have these experiments more explicitly done, that they don't collect the actual energy. They don't even do the jewel experiments. They don't do anything um, connected to this fundamental fact. And all they do is show you experiments like Professor Lewin, where the carts aren't the right, you know, there, there's no, it makes no sense. He tells you this weighs this when it's impossible because you know how big the cart is and you know how many attachments there are and it's missing all these attachments and it's missing these pieces. So it can't possibly weigh what he says it does. That's all you get is broken, fake, phony, you know, engineered, tinkered with, you know, manipulated experiments. But you don't get anything straight. And when they do show you something straight, okay, the Bruce video is pretty straightforward. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's so obviously undeniable fact, okay? I mean, I take two wooden blocks the same size. I put a rubber band between them. They crash right here in the middle. I stretch them evenly out. They crash right here in the middle at the same velocity. I make it one block and a two mass block, okay, and they crash here. This one goes the same speed. Obviously, it has more time because this one's not going to catch up, and so that's the difference in the location. This is obviously going one half the speed. This is going the one speed. Um, clearly, the the relationship is obvious, okay? this. I guess I have to use a one here and a two here. Okay, this one has twice the velocity. This has half the velocity. This has twice the mass, so it's the same number. Momentum completely works. It's conserved, but it makes no sense. This has twice as much energy as this. Newton's third law says there has to be the same energy going this way as there is going this way. Come on. All right, All right that's it. So um, maybe I'll just post this on YouTube, um, and um, so I'll make it an update video also. So I guess I made a pretense to go find the website and put that up. Okay, I'll do that. Boy, it's really broke recording. So that's really annoying. So I guess I'll stop recording and just say the hell with it. Just comment videos.